So here we are on our desktop, ready to write our software. Uh, so here we have our 18F4550 uh, Blink internal clock program used in the Blink demo board. So just below that here, let's make a new folder for our current project. Uh, we'll call that 18F4550 IO demo board. And I'll copy and paste that to make our lives a little bit easier in the next steps. So now we'll go to either start or our shortcut on the desktop, MP Lab IDE. And then we'll go to project, project wizard, next. Uh, double check our device is on 18F4550, and next. And make sure we're choosing microchip uh, C18 tool suite, and next. And now we're ready to create our project file. So if we go to browse, and then to the desktop, and to the location that we just created, uh, where is it, 18F4550 IO demo board. And we'll make the project name the same. And so uh, that's the correct location there. <clears throat> and we don't need to add any existing files to our project. Our uh, software for this project will still all be just in one single C file. And finish. So now we're going to go to new file, resize things a little bit. Add a comment, copy and paste, uh, 18F4550 IO demo board. C, and then we'll save it, making sure to add the current file to the project. And we'll double check we're in on the desktop, and then in 18F4550 IO demo board looks good. And we'll change the name from untitled to 18F4550. IO demo board dot C. No spelling error, so we're in the correct directory. Uh, correct file name, add file to project, and we'll choose save. Now we're ready to start uh, entering our compiler config options. So uh, once again, remember that was under help and then topics, and pick 18 configuration settings if you'd like to refer to the list of them for the 18F4550. And let's see, where is that? Pick 18F4550. And there we are. Um, but rather than retype all these in, if since they're pretty much all going to be the same as in the previous project, if we simply right click on blink internal clock dot C, open it with Notepad, and Control A for highlight all, Control C for copy, and then we'll paste that into iodemoboard.c and that'll give us a good starting point for the rest of the code as well. So of course we're going to delete the internal clock.c name and let's close out the blink internal clock directory and we're definitely going to need the data sheet later on so let's open that up now. Okay so now we have our 18F4550 data sheet up and our IO demo board diagram up and we're ready to start writing our software. So um, basically all these compiler options are going to be the same. Uh, we're going to leave most of these features here off and the first three still don't matter because we're still going to use the internal clock and then we'll leave the internal clock setting also the same. One thing we do want to note here is in this comment if OSCON is left as default clock speed will be 1 megahertz. Uh, since we're using analog to digital conversion it would be advantageous to have the clock speed be a little bit faster so we're actually going to change the OSCON register as one of the first things we do in main, but that doesn't affect this statement here. So let's scroll down a little bit, and we're still going to need function prototypes, but our function will be different. We're not going to need a delay function anymore, but rather we will need a show byte on LEDs function. And so what we're going to do is the potentiometer here will read a value. Um, anywhere from 0 volts to 5 volts and we're going to read that into the microcontroller on this pin as an 8-bit value 
so that'll be in the range of 0 to 255. Then what we're going to do is we're going to show uh, that value on these eight LEDs when switch one is on. When switch one is off, we'll use uh, switch two and switch three to actuate our LEDs. So in other words, if switch two is pressed, then these LEDs will be on, and if switch three is pressed, these LEDs will be on. So that's if switch one is off. If switch one is on, then these eight LEDs will show the binary equivalent of a value from 0 to 255 representing the state of the potentiometer. So we'll have both, depending on the state of switch one, we'll have both digital and analog inputs in our same demo board. So uh, for a function prototype, when we get the analog to digital result from pin 2 here, uh, we're going to call a function to show that 8-bit value on these LEDs. It'll be easier to write that as a separate function. And we're going to call that void show byte on LEDs. And the parameters for that will be byte, which we'll get to that in a moment, byte to show. So in addition to function prototypes, let's add a few other things here to uh, help us out. And I'll add a comment line to make that more readable. So uh, unfortunately, the C18 compiler, uh, I'm not sure the reason for this, but it doesn't define an actual uh, byte data type. So the, the answer to that is to use unsigned characters as 8-bit variables, in other words, as bytes. Um, so rather than state unsigned character a number of times throughout your program, it's much easiest to basically at the top of every C18 program you write, we're going to add this line, type def, unsigned character, byte. And now we can just use byte as our data type when we're looking for an 8-bit variable. Next we're going to add some pound defines to name our uh, switches in our potentiometer and our LEDs. In the previous project we only had uh, four LEDs and that was it. And now we have eight LEDs and three different switches in a potentiometer. So rather than refer to these pins directly, let's use some pound define statements to give them some names that makes it a little bit more clear what we're referring to. So we'll put that in our define section here. Uh, define pot 0 to be port a bits dot ra0 and then pound define switch 1 to be let's need up our spacing a little bit pound define switch 1 that'll be our slide switch that chooses between whether we're in the analog input mode or the digital input mode port 8 bits dot ra1 and then pound define switch 2 will be port a bits dot ra2 and pound define switch 3 will be port a bits dot ra3 and these names correspond to directly what the diagram has for us here. Pot 0 is on RA0, switch 1 is on RA1, and so on. So now we're going to do essentially the same thing for the LEDs so that we can name our outputs as LEDs rather than as port B bits dot RB 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. This is especially advantageous because in the first demo board, our blink demo board, we had RB0, 1, 2, and 3 corresponding to LED 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now our order is reversed. Um, generally speaking, with significant projects, you're not going to have the number of the output part exactly corresponding to an increasing count of the port bit uh, numbers. So to, to make the two match up and constantly keep them straight would be confusing. So it's much better to use a pound-defined statement, and then we can 
simply look at our diagram and see lead 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 without having to look through the port bits. So we're going to add some pound defined statements here. Pound defined lead 0 is going to be port B bits dot RB3. And again, that follows directly from the diagram here. RB3 is lead 0. And I'm going to fast forward through the remaining 7 since it's basically the same. So the first uh, four LEDs are port B bits, RB3, 2, 1, and 0. And the next four LEDs are port D bits, RD, 7, 6, 5, and 4. So now that we've entered our defines and our function prototypes, we're ready to move on to main. So main's going to be uh, quite a bit different than it was last time, so let's just delete all of main and start over fresh, and of course there is no more delay function. But we are going to need our uh, void show byte on leads function. It'd be easiest to copy and paste this. And we'll come back and write that at the end. Okay, so getting into main, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the clock uh, to 8 megahertz. Now, as we mentioned in our comments here, with this clock setting choice, if the OSCON is registers less left as the default, the clock speed will be 1 megahertz. So how do we change it to 8? Well, let's refer to our data sheet. If we cho uh, check section 2, suppose uh, we happen to know that the OSCON register is the register we want to change. Uh, from our comments up here and what we looked up last time, but suppose we didn't know that. You could uh, either search for oscillator here or you could look in the table of contents and go to the oscillator section. And after reading this short description, you'd pretty quickly find that the OSCON register controls your clock. So the next thing you're going to do is in the find box, you're going to type OSCON. And that's going to take you after pressing enter a few times, eventually to a table that looks very similar to this for the OSCON register. Now, pretty much all the special function registers in the chip uh, have a page like this in the data sheet. The format is very similar. So the idea here is since the 18F4550 is an 8-bit microcontroller, you're going to have bits uh, 7, they're listed MSB first, 7, 6, 5, 4, and so on, down to bit 0. And each of these um, individual bits within that register can be set to control what that register does based on this information here. So for example, what we'd like to do is speed the clock up from the default, and you can tell what the default values are by um, this information at the top here, RW, that's read or write. Some bits will be, special function register bits will be read only, some will be write